Welcome to Getting Started. The Airy 16S. On the back of the camera is the motor. This is the Aeroflex variable speed motor. The speeds of the motor can be changed by turning the ribbed motor housing. The silver disc on the rear of the motor is a switch that can move the motor in forward or reverse. The smaller dial is the engine knob, which can be used to clear the shutter when you need to see through the viewfinder and to advance the film when loading. The numbers on the motor housing are arbitrary, but can be used in conjunction with the camera's tachometer to set running speeds. This camera can run either off battery power or by being plugged into the wall. On the back of the camera is a hole with two prongs. Plug the power cord that has the four prong XLR male plug on the other end into it. This cable can be plugged into either the wall plug adapter or into the battery pack. To charge the battery pack, simply pull the Velcro open on the back side of the leather pouch with the lights on it. Pull the power cord out and plug it into the wall. Red indicates charging and the green light will turn on to let you know when the battery pack is fully charged. First, we will go through the process of loading a 100 foot roll of film and then go through the process of adding the 400 foot magazine to the camera. The camera door has a latch labeled O for open and C for closed. Set the latch to open and pop the lid off. Inside the camera, there is an empty daylight spool. Take the spool out by pressing in the silver release button. Take a fresh roll of daylight film and make the shape of a number 9 and pop it into the camera on the side closer to the lens by pressing down on the silver button. The pressure chamber assembly releases by pressing this button. It pops down and that enables you to get the film through both of the rollers. Bring your film through the first roller and lift up on the film gently. You will feel that it will not move anymore because the sprockets have engaged with the sprocket holes. Once you feel that, return the pressure chamber assembly to the lock position. You will notice a few white lines here. These are the guides for your film loop. Open the pressure plate by pressing the latching knob. Turn the engine knob like we talked about earlier, one frame at a time. Do this until the registration pin moves away from the film gate. Slide the film under the registration pin. Make sure to size the film loop according to the white film loop guide. Line the film up so that there is a sprocket hole right under the registration pin. Rotate the engine knob until the registration pin engages with the sprocket hole. Close the pressure plate, release the assembly again and loop the film through, following the white lines until the sprockets have engaged with the sprocket holes. Close the assembly again. Turn the inching knob to make sure everything is running smoothly. You can now run the camera by pressing this switch at the bottom of the camera. Make a fold in the end of the film roll in the shape of a claw. Feed this piece of film into the slit in the center of the empty daylight spool and wrap the loose film around the spool. Pop the spool into the camera using the silver release button and make sure the film is tight. Run the camera for a few seconds just to make sure it is all running smoothly. Return the camera door and set the latch back to the locked position. Run the camera and check the tachometer to see that the camera is running to speed. Turn the motor dial to the right to increase the speed and to the left to decrease the speed of the film. Reset the footage counters to zero. Now you are ready to shoot with a 100 foot roll. Now we will go through the process of loading a 400 foot film magazine. Keep in mind, normally this process is to be done inside of a changing bag. We are showing you this in the light only to show you how it is done. To open the cover of the 400 foot loader, press down on the safety latch while turning the magazine cover lock counterclockwise. Remove the door. Take your film and unroll it so it makes the shape of a number 9. Carefully slide the core over the feed side core adapter, making sure to keep your hands on the core and the film. 
There are two slots located at the bottom of the magazine, separated by a cloth roller. Gently insert the film into the slot closest to the feed side, and it will emerge from the base of the magazine. Loop the film out for about two feet, and then insert the film into the other slot. Grab the end of the film and make a small fold to produce a claw-like shape and insert it into the take-up core, and then wrap the extra film around it. Slide the core over the take-up side adapter. Release the film counter rolls by gently lifting up. They are spring-loaded and will rest on the feed and take-up rolls. Snap the top into place and then return the lock to the closed position. Now you can load the magazine onto the camera. Remove the magazine opening cover and put it aside in a safe place. Remove the camera door and any spools that may be inside the camera. Make sure the magazine lock is in the up position. Push the loop through the hole in the camera, making sure not to crease the film in any way while doing so. Sit the magazine on the camera and press the lock down to fasten the magazine to the camera. When you need more slack, make sure to pull only from the feed side and use the knurled take-up knob on the back side of the magazine to pull the film tight. Follow the steps from earlier on how to load a 100-foot roll into the RE16S to finish loading the 400-foot roll. Here you will find the footage counter. This will be the only way for you to keep track of the amount of film you will use while using the 400-foot magazine. This is the lever that will make the motor move forward and reverse. Turn it clockwise to go in reverse. Lock it back counterclockwise to get the motor to go forward. These are the locking mechanisms that will allow you to remove the motor if you need to move it to another magazine. Once everything seems to be working properly, put the camera door back on the camera and lock it in place. To adjust the diopter, you can turn this ring so that the image is sharp to your eye. If you do not see an image in the viewfinder, try turning the inching knob on the rear of the motor and it will move the shutter out of the viewfinder. Now you are ready to shoot. Remember that once you are done with the roll of film, take it out of the 400 foot magazine the same way it was put in. If the camera seems to not be working and you checked it for any problems, try pressing the buckle reset switch. This is the small switch next to the camera on switch on the inside of the camera. Thanks for watching Getting Started, the Aerie 16S.